So the difference between combination and per permutation is that combinations order doesn't matter. Combinations order doesn't matter. And what's a good example of this? Well, a good example of this is like you've got alphabet soup. Put your big old spoon in the alphabet soup. Pull it up. You got some letters. Is there any order of those letters? No. No. Sure is. It's just just some letters. You got F A C T. That's fast. All right. But it could be T C A F. Same deal. Yes, sir. Would you be able to figure out the odds of pulling up an alphabet soup? Getting, getting letters that could spell an actual word? No, like an actual word. In order. Well, it would have to be an order in your spoon. That would be... We should try it. We should test it out. All right. So order doesn't matter. Now, the formula for combinations, NCR, is N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. The only difference between this and permutations is that permutations doesn't have that R factorial there. Okay? So, on the test, you will be expected to know that, but not to use it. You will just be expected to be able to, like, answer the question, what is the formula for combination NCR? You have to be, expect you'd be expected to do N factorial over R factorial times N minus R factorial. But other than that, you're just going to be using your calculator. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's go through the early examples of combinations. So the first one, the simplest one, is You've got eight appetizers. You're choosing three for a single plate. Well, that's just 8C3. Well, first you determine N. N is the number of appetizers I'm choosing from, which is 8. R is the number of appetizers I'm choosing, which is 3. So it's 8C3. I plug it into my calculator. I get 8C3, which is 56. Does that make sense to you guys? Simple as that, okay? Now, we move on from there and get a little bit more complicated by introducing probability. Don't be confused about permutations, combinations, and probability. Probability is just this extra element that we're adding on to doing like combinations and permutations problems, okay? But they're completely separate. Combinations and permutations are very similar. Um, you're grabbing objects, but probability is just Na over Ns. Okay, there are four girl, boys and eight girls on the debate team. The coach randomly chooses three of the students to participate in a competition. What's the probability that the coach chooses all girls? Well, it's probability, so the first thing I write down always is Pa equals Na, <laughs> God bless you, over Thank Ns. You. Now, okay, Ns know. is all the possibilities. NA is what I want or what I'm interested in. So to find NS, I explore all the possibilities. So in this case, what's N? How many people am I choosing from? 12. 12. Good. And how many choices am I making? R? Three. Three. So it's 12C3 because the order doesn't matter. I'm just interested in a group of three. 12C3, it's not like winning first, second, or third place or anything like that. 220. Now, NA, what's N in this case? Good. Why is it 8? All, all girls. You're interested in, in only choosing girls for the team. R equals 3 still because you're still only choosing 3. 8C3. is 56. PA then is 56 over 220, which is 0 0.255. That's my final answer. Does that make sense? 
You guys understand that? Yeah. I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, you just have to be able to look. I will tell you one thing though. If you try to do this problem without breaking it up by saying, okay, it's NA and NX. Okay, start with NS. What's N, what's R? Solve. Now go to NA. What's N, what's R? Solve. If you don't try and do it that way and you try to just figure it out in your head, it's super confusing. Because there's all these different numbers and you, it's hard to know what to put together. But if you do it systematically, it becomes very simple um, to do it. Any, yes, sir? So why don't you use 12? Because the order doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter. It's not It's not saying coach chooses all girls for first, second, third slot. It's just choosing the three girls for one team. Does that make sense? It doesn't, doesn't matter what order he picks the girls in. It just matters that they're all girls. Next. Next page is example B. There are 52 cards in a standard deck, 13 in each of four suits. Clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. Five cards are randomly drawn from the deck. What's the probability that all five cards are diamonds? Yeah. I just don't know. This means they like, listen, man, that's not my job. You figure it out. Right? Put it in your deck. Good job. Right? Leslie's like, yeah, I got this. Nice. I like that. This is just not like I it's my job. Good job, Leslie. All right. These two back there are like, I'm, we're mathematicians too, right? Good. All right. So probability of A is NA over NS. Break it up. What's NS? N is what? I'm thinking all my possibilities. Good job. Yes. 52. What's R? Uh, How many cards am I choosing? Five. Five. Very good. 52. Now, if I grab five cards from the deck, does it matter what order they're in? What order I grab? Oh, no. no. I can shuffle them around in my hand. It's still the same hand of cards. So it's 52. C, five. <laughs> 2,598,960. I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% sure about that, though. I've just done this now like five times. 598,000. Nice. All right. NA. What am I interested in? What am I interested in? Oh, A, five cards. Four, four. Four suits. Thirteen. Diamonds. I'm interested in diamonds. How many diamonds are there? Very good. 13. Good job, Isaiah. Happy birthday. Uh, R equals 5. Generally speaking, because unless you're changing the number of cards you're cho choosing, which wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense. You understand what I'm saying? It would be very rare for the R's to be this different in these types of problems. I, I can't think of one where it was so far. So it's 13 C5, which is 1,287. PA, therefore, is 1,287. Over 2,598,960. What is going on back there? All this whispering. I'm telling you. You guys don't know it, but I already put a microphone back there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's a lie. Okay. That's the probability. Does that make sense? Uh, hold on. Let me add this. Would be the would be the percentage. Mm -hmm. All right. Now moving forward. Those are kind of simple ones. Now look, we get into the next type of question, which is coin tossing. 
We did? Yeah. Okay. Good. So, coin tossing. A coin is tossed four times. What's the probability of getting exactly three heads? Remember, probability of A equals NA over NS, right? NS, when I'm tossing a coin, how many options do I have? I have two, heads or tails. How many times am I choose tossing it? Four, so it's two to the fourth, two, four, eight, sixteen. Do you guys understand that and remember it and know it? Okay. What about if I was tossing a six-sided die three times? What would that be? Six to the third. Six to the third, right? What about if I had true or false questions and I was choosing seven of them? Two to the seven. Two to the seven. What about if I'm choosing between roses and carnations randomly? And I'm choosing eight of them. Two to the eight. Two to the eight. It's just a choice, you understand? Okay. So NA though, probability of getting exactly three heads, what's N? What's N? How many times am I tossing the coin? Four times. How many heads am I looking for? Three. Okay. So it's 4C3, which is just 4. So the probability of A is 4 out of 16, which is 0 0.25. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? Okay. Now, let's continue, shall we? What about this? What is going on? That's deep. All right. Prophetic. Prophetic statements. All right. So here we see the results of rolling two, a set of two dice. Right? So you have your first die here, second die there. Okay? So you've got a dice in your hand and you roll them. If you roll a 1 and a 1, that's 2. If you roll a 3 and then a 5, that's 8. If you roll a 5 and then a, and then a 4, that's 9. Does that make sense to you guys? So these are all the possible outcomes of rolling the dice. Does that make sense? Okay. Those are all the possible outcomes. Now, knowing this, what's NS for this situation? Remember, NS is all the possible outcomes, the number of possible 36. outcomes. 36. 6 by 6 is 36. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's new. Okay. No, it's a new security thing. Okay. Shh, shh, shh. Now, what about if I t asked you the probability of rolling at least, or sorry, what about the probability of rolling a 9? What would that be? 4 out of 36, right? What about the probability of rolling a 10? 3 out of 36. 3 out of 36, good. What about the probability of rolling an 11? 2 out of 36. What about the probability of rolling a 12? Uh, one, one, one out of 36. 36. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, what about if I asked you the probability of rolling at <laughs> least <laughs> 9? At least 9. Well, what would that include? Which numbers? Ten out of 36. 9, 10, 10 good. 11 and 12, right? 
So what would I do with all those probabilities? Adam. So Adam, look. What would I do with all these probabilities? I would add them up. Now, the top would be 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, right? What about the bottom? Would I add 36 four times? No. No. It would be 10 out of 36. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, so what does this show us? When I'm interested in something like at least this number or at most this number or multiple different combinations or whatever, I add up not ns. I don't add ns a bunch of times. ns didn't change, right? I add up the na for all of them to be one na total. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to you guys? The numerator, I add them all up together until I get the total. And then I divide that by my ns. Does that make sense? Yes. You see? So I take all of the individual ones that I'm interested in, I add them up, and that's how I get the total. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay, let's take a look at an example problem. What's an example? A coin is flipped five times. What is the probability that the result is heads at least four of the five times? At least four of the five implies which numbers? Four and five. Does that make sense? Now, probability, I'm thinking PA equals NA over NS. Is that clear? Now, NS is what? Two to the fifth. I'm flipping a coin five times. Two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. Bam. Now, NA. How many times am I going to have to figure out NA? Or how many things am I going to be interested in? Two. I'm going to be interested in four heads and five heads. Sounds like a joke, right? Four heads and five heads. Cool joke, cool joke. All right. Now, for both of these, what's N? How many times am I flipping the coin? Five. So N is five for both of them. Now for this one, what's R when I'm interested in four heads? I got it, I got it. Okay, shh. What about when I'm interested in five heads? Guys, this is very important. R is five. So this is five C four. And this is 5C5. This is 5 and this is 1. What do I do with those two? Adam. Adam. 5 plus 1 equals 6. Now, that's the total NA. I get 6 over 36, which is 1 over 6, or in other words, 0. Oh, over 32. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 6 over 32, which is 0 0.1875. Does that make sense to you guys? Do you have any questions on that? Yes, sir. I thought that if it was 5C5 and they were like the whole, the same numbers, then you just do that number factor. For permutations. Oh, okay. Combinations. Combinations, combinations. combinations, if it's the same number, it's always 1. Permutations, it's just that number factor. Exactly. Good job. All right, let's see if we can come up with another example of this. Um, here, here's a good one. Okay. A math department has a large database. This is the last one we're going to do, and then you'll have your homework. A math department has a large database of true-false questions, half of which are true and half of which are false, that are used to create future exams. A new test is created by randomly selecting six questions from the database. What's the probability the new test contains at most two questions where the answer is true? Okay, let's break this problem down. PA equals NA over NS. NS. What's NS in this case? We've got true-false questions, right? So it's kind of like flipping a coin. 
So it's 2, but how many questions am I choosing? 2 to the 6, which is 64. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. Now, an A, I'm interested in at most two questions where the answer is true. Well, what numbers does that imply? At most two implies 0, 1, and 2. So let's do it for 0, 1, and 2. So 0, true, true, 1, true, and 2, true. Okay? In all of these, what's N? 6. All of them, I'm choosing 6 questions. And then R is just equal to the number that I'm interested in. 0, 1, and 2. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in this case, in this case, it's 6C0, 6C1, and 6C2. Okay? You've got to determine all of those. 6 C 0 is 1, 6 C 1 is 6, and 6 C 2 is 15. Okay? What do I do with all those? Add them up, right? 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 15 is 22, but you got the right idea. It's 22. Probability of A equals then 22 over 64 which is 0 0.34375, good, 34375, or just 344. Any questions on this? All right, your homework is page 1222, numbers 1 through 13. That's your homework. That's it for the day. Good job, class.